In this video, we're going to discuss some of the fundamentals of mass properties in OpenVSP. Now, if we click on this sphere, you'll see that we have a unit radius sphere. We go to the general tab and our mass properties are here. We have the volumetric density set to one for this example. And notice we have thin shell deactivated. If we turn this on, this gives us the ability to change the surface area density of this model. So let's turn this back off for now. Uh, important to remember here that the density and surface area density that you input needs to be in the units that your model is built in. So if you're using feet, use feet. If you're using meters, use meters. Common sense applies. So let's look at how VSP might use these values. If we click on analysis and mass properties, we have the ability to turn up the number of slices so we get a very fine cut. We're gonna use just this primary sphere and compute this value. Now you can see that VSP has sliced this 200 times and summed up all the little incremental pieces into a total mass of 4.186. Now the true mass of a unit sphere is gonna be 4 thirds pi or 4.1888. So there's a small discrepancy between the theoretical value of a unit sphere and what VSP calculates because there is you know, some triangulation of these meshes there's some truncation involved. But for the purposes of conceptual design, within a quarter percent is usually pretty good for some of these basic components. Now, let's see what happens. If we get rid of that, we're gonna show our main sphere. Let's set this density for the volume to zero, turn on thin shell, and leave that again at a unit mass per area. Let's compute this again. Here you can see it's sliced it again, but it's only using the thin shells. In this case, we have the value for the surface area of a sphere. So you can see there are a couple of different ways that you can assign mass properties to individual components in VSP and have those computed and output.